Welcome to another moment in the Word. Are you good, but you're still noticing that no matter how hard you try to avoid doing bad things, saying bad things, thinking bad things, trying to be right, that still there's something lacking? Well, that's precisely what's going on in the account that we are reading and meditating on now in Matthew's Gospel. We're in Matthew chapter 19, and we're meditating actually on verses 18 to 20. It's uh, now Jesus' response to this rich young ruler that has come to Jesus and said, Good master, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus has responded to him and said, Why do you call me good? There is none good but God. But if that be the case, that you want eternal life, you've got to keep the commandments. Here's now what happens. He said unto Jesus, which Jesus said unto him, you shall do no murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall honor your father and your mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the rich young ruler said unto him, all these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Well, maybe you can relate with that. Maybe you've been very religious, but you know there's something not right. Okay, so now let's look at this a little bit more intensely and, and find out what Jesus is saying and what this man is saying. Well, first of all, he's still trying to isolate. He thinks that there is one panacea, there is one commandment, there is the one elixir, one uh, silver bullet that's going to now correct everything. Then that he knows that he is a good person. He knows that he's young. He knows that he's wealthy. He's got everything that the world says this is wonderful, and yet there's something missing. And now he has come to Jesus. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, leaving Perea. He is catching him on the way, stopping our Lord, and he's asking this question, but it's a profound question. It's about relationships and he knows there's something missing. And this whole chapter is about relationship. Remember chapter 18 in Matthew is about forgiveness and, and offenses and how to overcome that reconciling. But once we reconcile, then we saw in the beginning of chapter 19, we're looking at marriage and then at children. And now we're looking at a relationship with others. Isn't this really in, in, incredible and important? But it's also things get in the way of our relationship with others. And so we find him saying which. And, and literally it could be which one or, or uh, the matter of uh, I, I trying to identify what is it that I'm lacking. It's only one word. One word in English, one word in Greek. And maybe that's the word that you're saying. What's lacking? What, what one? Which? And so then Jesus says to him, and he starts with, and it's interesting, the tablets, the, the commandments, the Ten Commandments, they're divided into two tablets. There's four commandments in the first tablet that thou shalt love the Lord thy God. There's only one God. You shall have no other gods. You're not to take his name in vain that you are to uh, uh, worship him and that you are to not make any uh, graven image. But then the second has six. And the first is thou shalt honor thy father and thy mother. The second is, or the now seventh uh, commandment, is that um, uh, you should not commit adultery. Jesus is starting with the sixth commandment, which is thou shalt not murder. Now, why did he start there? Why didn't he go to the first tablet? Well, the first tablet has to do with the essence of our relationship with God. But the second is the evidence of it. And what this man is looking for is evidence. What's lacking? And he's thinking there's one thing that's missing, and he's not getting it. And so what Jesus is doing is taking him to the second tablet, the evidence. And that is your relationship with others. 
You see, you can be in your prayer closet and thinking that everything is great. You didn't have any arguments in your prayer closet. You didn't have any bad thoughts in your prayer closet. You prayed. Everything was going great. But then when you stepped out of the prayer closet, now we find out what's in the heart and we find out where the conflict is. And now you can have an argument and now you can have evil thoughts in your heart. And that's what Jesus is getting at. And so he starts then with the sixth commandment, thou shalt not murder, and notice that has to do with life. Do you really value the sanctity of life? The commandments are in the negative so that we would then do the positive, which is life. The next one is the the seventh commandment, thou shalt not commit adultery. Well, committing adultery is a violation of a commitment. Do you value commitments? Do you value covenants? Do you value promises made? Do you keep that which you have committed to another? And then he goes from that into thou shalt not steal. Well, stealing is taking what belongs to another. Do you value what another person has? And then he goes into bearing false witness. Well, that's lying, but the opposite of that is truth. Do you value the truth? Now, notice how Jesus is getting at this. He's really trying to help this man to look beyond the law and to realize what is really lacking. And that is that he's lacking the essence He's lacking the first. He's lacking, remember what he said in the very beginning? Good master, and Jesus says there is none good but God. He's missing God. He's standing only three or four feet away from Jesus, and he's looking right into the face of God, and what he's lacking is Jesus. He's not getting the relationship that he is wanting because merely keeping laws Merely being religious does not make us relational. And you see, God is relational. God said, let us, and that's an us, plural, make man in our image. Notice the pronouns are all plural, us and our, and male and female made he them. In other words, he made in his image the image of one in relationship, a man that is in relationship. And now what this man is looking for is a relationship. You don't get relationships merely by being religious. You can be in a monastery and not appearing to be a bad person, but you don't have any relationships. And that's what our Lord is calling this man to. And then he concludes. And notice he goes on to say, then he goes back to the fifth commandment, and this is verse 19, and he says, honor thy father and thy mother. Well, interestingly, honor your father and your mother is if you don't honor your parents, you're not going to honor anyone else. If you don't obey the authority of your parents, you're not going to submit to the authority of others. And so consequently, our Lord is going back because he is helping this man to understand that keeping the law is greater than just simply trying to avoid doing bad things. And so he goes on to say, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Well, that is a summary of the last six commandments. And that's what he's trying to do. Thou shalt love. Notice that a little bit later on, in Matthew chapter 22, there will be an attorney that will come to Jesus, and he will ask in chapter 22 and verse 36, and he will say, which is the great commandment of the law? Which is the greatest? And Jesus is going to quote, and he will quote from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 and 5, and it is the great Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. That's the first tablet. And that is what really provides the basis 
for the second. Remember, the first is the essence. The second is the evidence. Your relationship to others, what is it? That's going to show your relationship with God. And then Jesus goes on to say in verse 39, the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And now he's quoting, and it's in the Tanakh. It's chapter 19 of Leviticus, verse 18. And so consequently, those two to go together. And that's what this man is missing. And I wonder, is it something you're missing? Are you trying to be religious? Are you trying to be good, trying to be perfect, trying to be holy? But in all of that, it's a performance. Notice what he said, what must I do? And he's not realizing we're not human doings, we're human beings. And it's who we are. And we can only be changed, only transformed by the Holy Spirit and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is that relationship with him that provides a right relationship with others. We're going to look tomorrow at what blocks this man from coming to really understand that relationship. And maybe today, as you look at yourself, you can ask yourself, am I religious? But I don't love I don't really love God, and I really don't love people. You can be very good in the eyes of the world and still not know God and not have eternal life. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Father, for your word. Thank you, Father, for this passage, and that we see ourselves in this man who is rich, who is young, and who is good. And yet, Father, In many ways, he was poor. And in many ways, Father, he didn't have life at all. And he was wanting it, and he needed it. Lord, help us. Help us to depend on you. Help us to surrender our will and our lives to you, that you might live through us. And that you who are love might, uh, Father, express that love to everyone we meet today. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.